Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you you went to Austin, Texas uh, a few decades ago. Then you were originally from the great Kentucky. state of Kentucky. So, I mean, I, and we've talked about this before, but maybe because uh, I remember when I was when I was in high school and I had to figure out where I was going to go to college, um, you know, I wanted to go to Texas because to me, everything, I mean, Stevie Ray had just come out, but it was more than Stevie. It was, it was all that Texas implied with music. You know what I mean? And it seemed that, um, uh, you know, Austin, Santa, I mean, just everything, every aspect of it from, um, you, you know, from Freddie King to ZZ Top, uh, the fabulous yeah. thing, all, all points in between. And then there was the food, you know what I mean? So there was, there was all of this stuff. And I remember, um, uh, there was a, um, at that time, Herb Ellis had a guitar school in San Antonio. I can't remember what it was called, but that was a place I kind of had my eye on. And, um, and my folks, you know, my dad was a lawyer and, and I was the youngest of seven kids and everyone had gone to college and done traditional. No one else was even remotely musically inclined in the, in the family other than my mom. And so this idea of going to Texas to some unaccredited, you know, place to study guitar was just out of the picture. So I ended up going to school in, in northern Wisconsin and, and whatever happened, happened. But be that as it may. So Texas was kind of a place where it's like, man, I would, I would have loved to have gone there and just started anew. But you actually did that. So I yeah. want to hear about that decision and um and kind of the development over the years and how it all kind of transpired and then why you chose to stay there and that kind of stuff well it all started when i opened up trace ombres <laughs> and looked at the inner sleeve and saw that spread of mexican food yeah <laughs> it, and honest to god that's it started right there can you dig it? So for me, it all started when I opened up the album cover of Trace Ombres and saw the spread of Mexican food in there. And I was a like, sumptuous repast. They do not have that in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, you know, and uh, I love ZZ Top. Um, Billy Gibbons, his whole thing back then, especially, was, was you know, a big influence, but at the same time, I was listening to Wes Montgomery, Norman Blake, Roy Buchanan, BB King. It was that was just part of the equation. But I went to Bloomington, Indiana, when I was 17. I went there to go to college, ostensibly to be a music major, and I made it through one year, um, and got into a band that we toured the Midwest for two years. And that band had Kenny Aronoff and a bunch of guys that had graduated from the School of Music. So they were all way more accomplished musicians than me. It was a great experience. I came back to, to Bloomington after that and worked uh, was working in a record store there. And I started listening to Joe Ely, Lou Ann Barton, the Fabulous Thunderbirds, uh, the Leroy Brothers, Stevie Ray, had just, you know, when he came out. And I was like, man, uh, this is all coming out of Austin, and this is what I'm digging right now. And I had a friend who had moved to Austin who I knew – she used to work at a deli in, in Bloomington, and she would she would pilfer ten sandwiches and bring us bring them to our band house, which was called the Roach Motel. And any, she uh, you know fed fed the band. Anyway, she moved to Austin and uh, invited me down, and I came down to visit her for like four nights, and went to hear you know the Cobras uh, with Denny Freeman and Derek O'Brien. Joe Sublette on horns at the Continental and then, uh, you know, a couple other things. And I went back home and I packed up my Honda Civic and drove back down, slept on her floor for three, uh, three weeks, got a job at music land in record store in the mall where I had to wear a tie, uh. <laughs> but they would make, you know, when the district manager would come through to like, look at things, he would ask me, would tell me to go ahead and take the rest of the day off. Uh. I, you know, like, I don't think I, he wanted this guy to see me. I don't know what he was, was going on there, but so while I was working there, Stevie's record came out. Um, it, it just, the record hit while I was working at the store. I remember the day that it came into the store. But, in, you know, I ended up playing with all of those people I just mentioned, except for I had to play with the Leroy Brothers, but I recorded and pl toured with Ely for six years. I worked with Luann Barton off and on for five years. And then I, uh, I actually did one fabulous Thunderbirds record after Jimmy left the band. 
So it was just, I mean, I, it was heaven on earth down here then. It was half as many people. And I've been here ever since. I can't, I keep looking for another place to move to. I think, you know, gosh, I'm, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it now. And, uh, you know, I've just kind of come to the realization that this is home and right. I'm staying. And no matter where you go, there you are. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to move again. Oh, I understand. We, uh, we moved to a different house with the clan about three, four years ago now. And then that's something I don't know. I, I don't wish to repeat anytime soon. Although, you know, it's interesting because you see musician contemporaries of ours that, that move to places and you, know, you always kind of give it a thought. Well, is, is that a place to go? But it seems like everyone's moving to Nashville now. And what's interesting is that you, we've talked about this before about how Nashville used to be a place where you would be flown in a couple times a month, probably to do sessions back in the day. And, and Double clearly skate. all that, all that stuff is kind of dried up, but yeah. yet there seems to be more guitar players moving from LA to Nashville now for whatever reason. And that's, that's interesting to me. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think it's, um, it's a really vibrant culture there now. Um, but I do feel like just talking to my friends that live there, that it, the supply and demand thing, there's just so many great players that, uh, you know, the kind of, I was really fortunate to be there when, when we were doing major label records, it was a double scale union session and because of that i have a pension now you know uh, the, right. enough sessions on the card and you know i've been in the union for 30 years um the uh the problem with so many players being there is that the, the, there are guys that you know younger guys that work really cheap and, right and i can't blame them i want you know i mean i would do anything when people would ask me but it sort of drives the overall pay scale down a notch and i think it's just if you're not out there hustling like big time like out at night being seen it's hard to break into the scene there um the cost of living has really gone up um i just you know again can do my thing better here and right. And that's, you know, it goes along with what we were talking about earlier. What do what do I do? And I think, you know, if you're a, a good player who's trying to figure out where to move, how to do it, you know, do you go on the road? Do you try to cultivate sessions? If you could just take some time to really get, put some thought into what are your strengths? What do you really want to do? You know, as opposed to, oh, I've got to learn all the Brent Mason thing. I've got to, right, 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 right. you know, the Tom Bukovec thing. I've got to, you know, to, to be in Nashville. Well, maybe not, because the reason I worked there for 10 years steadily was because I sounded different. Right. Um, but, um, God, right. Who knows? Who knows where it's all going right now? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I. Uh, just looking from the point of view of touring and whatnot, of course, it doesn't matter where you are in that particular situation. But I've, I've got look at all the stuff I have for the fall and. You know, let's be honest, none of that stuff's going to happen. You know, there's the overseas stuff that I had booked. I mean, my uh, agent in England's like, I'm, it's going to happen. I'm like, dude, it's probably not going to happen. And I think, uh, uh, I, you know, yeah. I had a big Italian thing. I mean, that was another thing I didn't even mention earlier. But, I, you know, I love going to Italy and I've done, yeah. had really good times and I do well there. And man, it, had, it was like it had a nice run coming together with the record coming out and everything. And it's just they they're so decimated over there in certain parts. And I went to the, the Milan that that whole area, the Lombardy, oh, yeah. twice last year. And uh, you know, I was getting friends calling me from there like a month before it hit here, really bad. And it was it was really sad. And yeah, they're still recovering, and they will be. I mean, it's so God, you know, like. When do we get to go back and do it? Right. It's and, and will it ever really be what it was before? We don't know. We have no idea what's going to. But you know, you got to remain optimistic and I am, and see what happens. I've been fortunate enough that you know I can do stuff remotely, and that seems to be going well thus far, and uh, all other kind of stuff. But you know, what, what's interesting is that it seems like the desire for people to, to play guitar. Um, and to still want to do things like, you know, uh, purchase music, purchase uh, instructional material, and Skype lessons or whatever, the, and, and guitars and, and amps and all that kind of stuff. That's, that seems to be 
still happening for now. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, yeah. Of course, with the economy doing what it's doing, we'll see what happens. But again, uh, remaining optimistic, uh, we shall see what transpires. But tell us a little, what's that now? I'm trying to say in gratitude. It gets yeah, exactly. me a long exactly. way down the road.